Well, hello and welcome. My name is Florian Dur, and I'm an Associate Professional Officer at FAO North America. It is my pleasure to serve as your moderator today. On behalf of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and the Commission for Environmental Cooperation, thank you for joining us today for this webinar ahead of the first ever International Day of Awareness on Food Loss and Waste, which is a global call to action to transform and rebalance the way our food is produced and consumed. Let me give you a brief overview of today's event. The webinar will provide a platform for stakeholders in Canada, the United States and Mexico to present on and discuss critical food loss and waste reduction policies and projects. After welcoming remarks and two keynote speeches from FAO and the CEC, we will hear from a governmental panel about food loss and waste reduction efforts in Canada, US and Mexico. We will then hear a private sector perspective, an academic perspective, and a youth entrepreneurship perspective on how to reduce food loss and waste. After the Q&A section, addressing questions from you, the audience, we will hear closing remarks from Lina Paul, FAO representative to uh, Mexico. Now to get us started on the topic, let us watch the official public service announcement on the International Day of Awareness on Food Loss and Waste. easy to forget how food arrives on your plate. And that makes it even easier to waste it. Let's end food loss and waste today. 29 September 2020. International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. This video is a reminder that food doesn't magically appear in supermarket shelves, but that if we waste food, we also waste all the resources that go into producing it. But without further ado, let me hand over to Vimlendra Sharan, Director of the FAO Liaison Office for North America. Mr. Sharan brings with him more than two decades of national and international government leadership experience, focusing on rural development, agriculture, and food security issues. Dear Vimlendra, the floor is yours. Thank you, Florian. And uh, good morning. Good afternoon, good evening uh, to all of you joining from various parts of the uh, globe. I just saw in the participants list, people joining in from US, Canada, parts of uh, Mexico, parts of Europe, even from uh, Africa and uh, parts of Asia. So we are actually global on this uh, platform today. I welcome all of you to this uh, webinar on the occasion of the first ever International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste, uh, which is being uh, celebrated globally tomorrow. Uh, we want to recognize the leadership of Andorra and uh, San Marino in establishing this uh, day, which hopefully from now on will get celebrated every day, every year on the 29th of uh, September. Uh, I was mentioning to colleagues earlier when the webinar had not started, but how excited we are today to have a really truly North American uh, uh, webinar. Our office has a remit, FAO North America has a remit of uh, USA and Canada, and most of you who have been to our earlier webinars would have found our effort, our speakers and panelists all concentrated from USA and Canada. But today we have Mexico, along with USA and Canada, and that is really giving it a North American flavor, and also bringing in a very different context. While USA and Canada has its own specific context, context Mexico brings in a very, very different flavor to the whole discussion. So thank you, Lina, uh, FAO country head in Mexico for agreeing to be a part of this. Thank you to all the uh, representatives from the Mexican government and organizations who are part of this. Uh, special thanks to CEC who are co-hosting this uh, event with us. We will hear definitely more about CEC from uh, Richard Morgan, the executive director who's joining us uh, for this event. Uh, International Day is a, is a good time, I think, uh, to pause and to really think as to how the world is faring 
in its endeavor to reduce food loss and waste? The answer, uh, sadly, is not very encouraging and much, much more needs to be done than uh, what we're doing currently. I'll not get into the impact of food loss and waste. I think it's very well known to everyone. Uh, the impact on food security, the impact on uh, 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 greenhouse gas emissions, the impact on uh, you know limited land and water resources. These are well known and accepted. But my pitch actually is to it's time has come to move from uh, advocacy to action, and it is uh, very important as we sit around multiple uh, roundtables and webinars to mark this day for us to deliberate upon policy actions that must be initiated sooner rather than later. And these policy actions uh, have to be informed by science, have to be informed by uh, evidence and not just by you know, gut feelings and what we've heard. So it's, it's very important that we know what constitutes food loss and what constitutes food waste, what distinguishes them, how do we measure them, what aspect of food loss and waste are we planning to really tackle through our policy interventions? Is it now, uh, is it conservation of resources, which is our primary focus, or is it uh, impact on the uh, greenhouse gas emission, which is our primary focus? Because these will determine our policies. Where in the value chain are we going to initiate action? Which part of the world will see what type of actions to ensure that food loss and waste uh, are brought to the minimum? What about issues around food safety? Multiple such questions must be addressed to come out with a correct policy prescription. Uh, what holds may be true for US and Canada may not hold true for say uh, uh, Mexico or for Bangladesh. So there are different contexts and these contexts must, must be understood. The socioeconomic model behind these countries and the way they function that must be understood. And only then we can come up with the right prescription. And I'm sure all our panelists today are experts. They have uh, worked in this field, they know the area and they will be speaking to these questions and many more uh, in their presentations. So let me stop there. But uh, before signing off, um, it's my proud pleasure to introduce Richard Morgan, the Executive Director of the Commission for Environmental Cooperation. Uh, Richard, uh, originally from Montreal, uh, joined CEC after serving a four-year term as Commissioner of the Canada-US International Joint Commission uh, till up to 2018. He brings over 30 years of combined experience in government, business and management consulting in several sectors, uh, ranging from natural resources to health sciences. Richard started his career as an executive assistant to Prime Minister Maroni and later served as his special advisor, director of planning and operations over a seven year period. So I think the reins of CC is in real safe hands. And I'm sure uh, Richard, in his uh, talk with us just now, will lay out the important work that CEC is doing in this arena. So Richard, uh, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you to Mr. Sharan and to FAO North America for inviting the CEC to co-host this important event, marking the first ever International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. I wanted to offer our very best wishes to FAO uh, on its 75th anniversary uh, in 2020 and wish you all continued success. The issue of food loss and waste is a major challenge we as a society have to face and marking a day of international awareness is a fantastic initiative. At the Commission for Environmental Cooperation, we work with the federal governments of Canada Mexico and the United States on environmental issues of common interest. We provide a neutral forum for examining emerging and complex issues and possible strategies to address them. Under the new North American Trade Agreement, a renewed commitment has been made by the three governments to work together on environmental concerns. Circular economy issues and the overall shift towards more sustainable production and consumption patterns are a key pillar of our Commission's new five-year strategic plan. Addressing the issue of food loss and waste has been a major part of our agenda at the CEC for the last five years. 
our 2017 foundational report on the characterization and management of FLW provided a first ever look at the scope of this issue from a regional perspective and calculated that close to 170 million tons of food is lost or wasted in North America each and every year. That would be enough food to feed 260 million people a year, which it represents about 50% of our region's population. The energy wasted to grow this food is enough to power 274 million homes. What's more, if we address this issue, everybody wins. Taking action to, pre to prevent food loss and waste offers a rare triple win, that is economic gains, reduction of environmental impacts, and improved quality of life for those who currently lack sufficient food. Today, we will hear from uh, organizations and governments tackling this issue in a very, in, a, in, a, in a several innovative ways from different vantage points along the food supply chain. I would like to thank all of you who have joined us today on this occasion and for playing such an important role to draw more attention to this very important issue. Have a good webinar and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you so much Richard. <clears throat> thank you again for all the work and these really staggering numbers. Indeed, it's often important to have an idea of that I mentioned to be able to uh, not just raise awareness, but take action. And now we will move to um, one of our keynote addresses, which is by Maximo Torero. Now, if you've watched any uh, webinars on food loss and waste uh, or any topic on food and agriculture over the last month, he will be no stranger to you. So Maximo Torero is chief economist of FAO. And prior to joining FAO, he was executive director at the World Bank Group and led the division of markets, trade and institutions at the International Food Policy Research Institute, IFBRI. Thank you so much for being with us, Maximo, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, and let me share my, my screen. So it's a pleasure to, to be here. So my job today is to, to present about food loss and waste and what, what we are doing in the topic. So let me start by saying that today we have 690 million people undernourished, and this number is going to increase in 132 million because of COVID-19. We have around uh, 2 billion people that don't have access uh, to food uh, and in regular terms. And we have 3 billion people that cannot access to healthy diets today. Despite that, uh, we are observing in these pictures uh, the situation we are facing in terms of, of food losses uh, and waste. Uh, we are seeing how, because of COVID-19, uh, some food was wasted uh, because there was no market for it or because they couldn't transport it and could be purged. So these are the things that, that today uh, we cannot accept uh, and is unethical given the situation many people are facing and the situation that we are facing in hunger. The job of FAO is trying to, to be normative and try to bring the information that is needed to be able to make the correct uh, decisions and the correct choices. So in 2011, FAO raised the issue that one third of the food is lost or wasted. And, and, and this was to create awareness of the importance of the topic. And that was linked to the SDG 12.3, which is, is, is reflects the growing attention to the issue. But as a result of that, there were two indices created. One is the food loss index, which FAO is the custodian, and which measured what is food losses, which is basically from post-harvest up to the wholesale included. And what is food waste, which is the food waste index, which is responsible of UNEP, which is from the retail to the consumer. It's very important to make these two definitions because it allows us to understand a little bit more this third and what was behind it. And that allows us to also look in detail what has been the different stages of trying to understand what post-harvest losses was. And there has been several elements in the process. And basically, for example, everything related to pre-harvest was not included in the process of understanding losses. And many of the pictures I show at the beginning, those corn being destroyed in the field are problems that happened pre-harvest in the field and not necessarily only in the post-harvest side, but most of the focus in the frameworks that have been looked at has been in the, in the post-harvest side. So with that, this helped us to come up with, a, with our food loss index, which basically focuses on post-harvest losses. So from, from post-harvest up to the wholesale included, 
but also has the flexibility to move backwards spirit harvest. But this come, let us come to the conclusion that there was around 14% of food produced is lost. That means how much food is lost in the world. And of course it varies among regions and different regions are more, uh, have more losses than, than other regions. But, but that's something that finally we have a baseline. And that's very important for this food loss and waste day because it's the baseline from where we're going to start so that we can from there start to monitor what are the actions and what are the impacts that we are having. Not only that, it allows us to understand uh, where to intervene, in, in, in which commodities to intervene more, and which, in which commodities we need to put more focus. And that's why we look at different types of commodities. We look, and by region, we look at cereals and pulses. And as you can see, there are some regions where cereals and pulses have bigger high levels of losses and fruits and vegetables, which both of them are essential for a healthy diet. But the other thing we found is that the differences between countries are enormous. And that's the heterogeneity that we have at the country level. And we get into ranges, we go to significant levels, these, these horizontal lines. But again, it allows us to understand where was happening and in which commodity was happening. Then we also allow us to understand where in the value chain was happening. And that's really important because we, if we want to resolve a problem, we need to know where the problem is. And it could be happening in the, in, on the post harvest, it could be happening in the storage facility, which most of the interventions have been are linked to storage or in the processing and packaging. Like in COVID-19, the major problem we are facing is in processing and packaging because of the logistical problems of the moving of high value commodities, especially, or if it was happening in the wholesale or retail. So this information, which now is being collected with a tool that we developed with artificial intelligence, which is posted daily in FAO, allow us to monitor the track by region in cereals and pulses. We can do the same for fruits and vegetables, and we can do the same for meat and animal production, including fish where specifically in fish, there is very little measurement and understanding of what are the levels of food losses and waste. But our focus, as I mentioned before, is on food losses. But again, understanding where in the value chain the problem is, I think is central and is something where we need to put a lot of priority. Now, just to give you an idea of the footprint, as it was mentioned before uh, by Richard, of the footprint of losses by product category. In cereals and pulses, we are losing 912 trillion calories. We're losing 531 trillion milligrams of phosphorus, which is essential for nutrition. 219 of, uh, trillions of, of, of milligrams of magnesium. We have a footprint, a carbon footprint of 519 million tons of CO2. Blue, blood, blue water footprint of, of 75 billion met, uh, cubic meters and a land footprint of 79 million hectares. And for each commodity, we can now identify what is being lost. So this is what is not only affecting consumers because they cannot eat these edible foods. It's also affecting our climate, but it's also affecting our environment and our resources, which today are in an astringent condition. So these are the numbers that help us to better understand the problem and how to resolve it. But let me move now to the solutions. And this here, there are other surprises. When we look at comparative losses in quantity of maize stored using different storage interventions, this was a huge review that we did uh, with colleagues of, of, of us, uh, an initiative called CERES. You will see that most of the interventions that reduce losses have been tested very few cases, which are basically the plastic, the polyethylene bags, which incorporation of pesticides, those are the ones that reduce and have minimum effects on losses. But most of the other interventions didn't have such an effect. And that's important because what is the size of the bar is telling us what is the weight loss or what is the damage, the percentage damage loss. And only very few interventions have the impact that we expect. But even in those, it was very difficult to, to get information on cost effectiveness. So we still have a lot of ignorance on, on what to do and a lot of solid evidence on how to resolve problems. Here we're looking at quant quantity and quality loss associated with the storage structure in potato and the storage protectant in jam, for example. And, and in potato and jam, again, we see only very few cases in which we have a significant impact of reduction of losses. That's the size of the bar, both in quantity loss for potato and for jam. So improved pit, for example, create a significant impact and cold rooms. So storage facilities with cooling facilities, which for potatoes is really important. And very few countries have that deployed. India started some progress on it. We are working intensively right now in developing a storage corridor with cooling facilities in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. 
we believe that that could help enormously to minimize losses in high value commodities. And potatoes, which is not a high value, neither a staple, is in the middle, also required uh, cooling facilities to be able to increase the time in which I can sell it. And that reduces and increases the resilience of farmers to chops like the one we are facing in COVID-19. And the same applies to jam. And here, looking at citrus, uh, at citrus packaging, at citrus storage pro processing, and mango storage uh, protectant. And again, despite of the interventions, as you can see in many of these cases, the sizes of the percentage of, of losses in quantity still are significant. So the, the point I want to make by showing uh, these interventions here, you have tomatoes and onions, is that we need to keep improving the innovations. Uh, and that's part of the role of FAO, is not only to bring data, it's also to bring innovations that we can scale up and technology so that with that we can resolve the problems we are facing. Why is this so important? Because the interventions that need to be tailored to country context will help us to achieve SDG 12, of course, but will also help us to improve food security and nutrition, which is the core SDG, SDG 2, will help us to increase productivity and economic growth, and will help us to reduce natural resource and use of greenhouse gas emissions, as I mentioned before. So we have a, a triple win by, by reducing food loss and waste, and that's where we need to target, but we need to target good interventions that could reduce impact. Now, depending on the country context, uh, the, the, the interventions should be different and we should be thinking differently on them. If we are closer to the farm, the interventions will be more oriented to increase water quality and reduce water scarcity, to preserving land, that's what will improve because that's where I am reducing the use of those natural resources. And that will create income generation for the farmer and will increase food availability. But if I am closer downstream to the consumer, I will get the major benefits because I will reduce emissions and I will reduce plastic contamination, for example. And that will increase the quality and the nutritional content of food because I will have big, better diversity of diets. And today we know that 3 billion people cannot access to healthy diets. And I will also have better food distribution, redistribution and reduce prices for consumers. So depending on where I do the intervention, the effects will be different. And that's what we need to take into, into consideration. To improve food security and nutrition, actions has to be early on the supply chain in developing countries. That will have bigger impact. To improve productivity, we have to build business cases and create the systemic changes needed. But to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, basically for greenhouse emissions, we need to reduce waste, which is at the end of the supply in the, sub in the consumer side. And for natural resources, of course, we need to be at the farmer level, as I mentioned before. So those are the types of interventions that we need to focus. And we need to have several insights which are important. Not all food loss and waste reductions are created equal in terms of impact. So not all of them will have the same impact. Insight number two, it is difficult to manage what you cannot measure. And that's why we are making a huge effort in measuring. Insight number three is food, for food security, cheap technical innovations need in low income countries to reduce losses in the upstream part. And insight number four, innovation important in nudging the business case for food loss and waste reduction and for a broader investment strategy and policy coherence. And if we are going to talk of Build Back Better, it's essential to find the business case and to attract the private sector to be able to achieve that. Again, for food loss reduction, we will look at the point of focus in the producer side. For waste reduction, we are focusing more on affecting and reduction of emissions. And understanding that the whole value chain and the different impacts across the value chain is central because it will have effects over prices and not all laws will be cost effective for a producer. We need to make the business case for the producer to, to make the intervention. If he's going to dry his maize properly, not to face what we saw in the first picture, he will require to know that the market will pay for that better improved maize, which is aflatoxin free, for example. If the vegetables are going to arrive in good quality, he needs to know the standards to be able to make the investments. So all those changes are needed to be able to achieve what we want. But again, it's important to understand that the footprint, the carbon footprint, for example, in this case of, of maize production along the supply chain, could have a significant impact in the different levels, but a major impact of any change in footprint will be at the consumption side, on the waste side. Why? Because it's where most of the emissions have been already obtained or, or invested to be able to achieve the product that arrived the consumer. We have also developed the food loss and waste platform where we are bringing all the potential best practices. This is an online platform that you can access online. 
And here is where we're trying to put all the, the innovations and all the best practices that could be scaled up. This platform was developed as a result of the Turkey G20 process, but he has been relaunched a few months ago, and FAO is very active on that. And finally, we brought all this evidence in a special issue of food policy, because we think it's important to have quality literature and quality review literature. And all these articles are now published electronically and free downloading of all the evidence that we have collected, 15 papers that can be downloaded on how we are doing things uh, at FAO. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank you so much, Maximo, for this thorough overview uh, and really a global perspective, uh, after which we will now really come to uh, North America as well. And some key parts are really that food loss is at least as important as food waste. So on this day of awareness, we should not forget to talk about food losses that we um, should think about not just quantities, but also quality, data gaps and innovation remain, and that interventions need to be context specific. We will now come to our second uh, keynote by Armando Yanez, who is head of the Green Growth Unit at the CEC, who will tell us more about an exciting new campaign that the CEC has launched recently. Um, uh, Armando has over 25 years of experience on environmental and public policy design, analysis and implementation on issues such as environmental economics, sustainable development, environmental information and indicators, project development and international cooperation and negotiation. Uh, thank you, Armando. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Florian. And, and hello, everybody. I'm going to share my, my, my screen. So th thank you again for having me here. I'm really, really happy to be part of, of, of this uh, joint webinar. Uh, I think we are convinced that this uh, food loss and waste is a major issue we are facing and the way to, 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 to go about it is working together. So what better way to, 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 to face it than doing these joint efforts? Uh, so thank you again and congratulations to FAO for its 75 uh, uh, anniversary. And, and, and thank you very much for having me here. So I'm, I'm gonna talk to you about uh, the work that the CEC has been doing uh, for, the, for the past years on, on, on food loss and waste. Uh, this, this became a priority uh, on, on 2015 when the, when the three countries decided through, the, through its strategic plan to make, it, uh, to, to make food loss and waste a, a trinational priority. Uh, very much in line with the sustainable uh, development goals and, uh, and the, the goal of 12.3. And for that, uh, a group of, of experts was, was created from, from, the, from the three countries, uh, the steering committee, which, which gave guidance to the, to, to, to the strategy that the CEC has been following. Uh, this, this group of experts, I, I take my hat off to them, they're really, really good, good uh, individuals, very professional, very engaged. And, 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 and with them, we've come up with a, a very sound and, and straightforward uh, uh, strategy to tackle this, this issue and to guide our work. Uh, its logic is very simple. It's the first, the first uh, stage of, of the strategy was to understand the issue at hand. What were we facing? What were we talking about food loss and waste? Uh, what does it mean for North America? Uh, after that, once we have a better understanding of the of the issue, we uh, develop tools and resources to to tackle it, uh, and and finally to to test and and and, and improve the the resources and make sure we we use them. And throughout these these stages, uh, the idea was also to to uh, work together to build partnerships to 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 use the work that is already there to focus on. On, on North American uh, actors and and to eventually empower empower everyone to do to do uh, its corresponding bits. So I'm gonna talk to you about these three stages and, and uh, the, the work that's been done. <clears throat> so first, understanding the issue at hand at the very beginning in the context of the North American Initiative on Food Waste Reduction and Recovery, and the North American Initiative on Organic Waste Diversion and Processing. Uh, the CC, led by this steering committee, uh, uh, work on uh, develop these uh, publications, the foundational report, white papers, case study on what food loss waste means to 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 our region. Uh, as as Richard already mentioned, uh, that that's where the numbers started popping, <laughs> and. Approximately uh, 168 million tons are wasted annually in North America, uh, which is just by itself uh, an impressive figure. Uh, 
it 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 for, it means that uh, uh, maybe just a second because I can see this. There you go. Uh, it means <coughs> that uh, it it cost to the North American economy uh, 278 billion US dollars, and it's it's food that could have fed uh, over two two hundred and sixty million people. That's uh, about half the population of the region, which is uh, really really impressive. Uh, and and you you not only lose uh, this this food is not the only thing you are losing but we we waste so many more things uh, with this food loss and waste uh, with all the resources that go into growing and into the production into transporting uh, enough water to fill seven million Olympic size swimming pools uh, thirty nine million uh, uh, square meters of landfill space that's about thirteen football stadiums. <laughs> 193 million tons of greenhouse gases that are emitted needlessly. And it's really impressive. It's like driving 41 million cars continuously for a whole year. Uh, enough power, energy power to power 274 million homes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, problems with, with habitat lost. Uh, and of course, all the money that is uh, used. Uh, so it's it's a lot of resources that are being wasted. I, I won't stop too much on, on these figures, but I, all this information of this found, uh, foundational report, the uh, white papers and case studies, all of this is available on, on, on our website and we invite you to, to visit them. Uh, so we, we kept uh, uh, understanding the problem. This is just a, a glance of, of how, how each country fares at, at uh, per capita levels uh, on food loss and waste. Uh, and and this is through uh, across the supply chain, where 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 is uh, uh, the food the, the food loss and waste where where it happens, as you can see it happens everywhere across the, the supply chain. Of course, consumption is a big thing, but uh, pre-harvest, post-harvest processing, distribution, the whole thing it's it's there. Uh, food loss, of course, is focusing more on the earlier stages, and 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 waste goes more into consum consumption and. But it's 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 all around. So understanding this is very helpful in order to to move into the <clears throat> into the design of, of of the resources and tools. And of course, understanding as well the causes of of food loss and waste within each of these uh, stages is very important uh, and, uh, and 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 important for the design of of what came next, which is the the stage of the developing tools and resources. <clears throat> which actually has two, two components. Uh, the measurement component, which is focusing on, on, on measuring and of understanding uh, how, how, to, how to quantify uh, the, your bit of the problem, your contribution to the problem. Where, where, are, where are you uh, independently on, on of which stage do you, are you in the supply chain to understand uh, where are you having food loss and waste and what things can you do uh, about it. Uh, so uh, a, a technical report was developed as well as a practical guide, which is a, a very nice tool, which guides uh, the users to understand their own processes, to think about their own, their own operation, and to try to identify where, where they're having the, the problems and what options are, 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 are there. Uh, and as case studies were done also uh, in this effort to work closely with, uh, with, with uh, different sectors of the economy. Uh, one of those case studies is it was with Tots restaurant, which we will hear later uh, uh, Gustavo talking about their experience. Um, <clears throat> and then we also work on the, on the education component, which uh, uh, basically focuses more on, 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 the, on the later part, uh, stages of, of the supply chain. And, and very much on, on bringing uh, understanding knowledge to at the household level, uh, so so that we all uh, start learning these little little things that can be done, little tweaks in our daily lives to to do something about uh, this problem and, and contribute to the solution. Uh, 
Uh, so the Food Matters Action Kit was developed in this. In this, this is a, 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 an educational tool uh, designed for uh, to bring awareness. Uh, I won't stop too too too, too much on, on on the details, but again, this is available for for free <laughs> on our on our website, and it's really really nice. It's an educational uh, tool. It's 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 uh, for educators, uh, but gives activities for for children and youth. Uh, it's impact oriented. Uh, it, 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 it recognizes the challenges and, 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 and gives ideas of, 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 of these little things that you can do at, at home to, 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 to uh, ease the, this problem. Why use the Food Matters Action Kit? It's just it's simple, it's relevant, it's fun. And it's free. <laughs> that's that's the great thing about uh, uh, working in uh, in, in uh, this sort of institutions. That uh, it's it's not about the money. It's about doing things right and about uh, working together. So this is this is really a nice a nice tool. Uh, and you can register on the website and follow your activities and, and, and follow others. You, it's also about making networking, uh, finding other people that are also uh, working at different stages of the, of the supply chain and, 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 and working together. Okay, so then we move into the third stage, which is where, where we are at now. It's the, uh, to test uh, these tools, to, to, to improve them and, and to promote their use. Uh, and again, it has two components. On the measurement component, uh, the practical guide I talked to, to you about, we've been focusing very much on, 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 on testing it, uh, piloting. We, we've been partnership with, with, uh, with different actors across the supply chain to test the, this, this, this uh, uh, guide uh, and, and many important uh, companies are, are being involved with developing this this pilot and, and also case studies uh, and the idea is to with all this is to improve the guide and keep using and, and offer this tool for for anyone that, that wants to, to 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 do something about it to understand their their, their own processes uh, to, to to be able to to, to do this so, so the idea is to empower them to to make the the, the action their own and, and to, to keep working together. And along this, uh, the, the CEC is, uh, it provides uh, support every step of the way. Um, <clears throat> and then on the education component, uh, uh, we are currently on this uh, the shrink food waste campaign, uh, as Florian mentioned, it's uh, about uh, uh, raising awareness at the, uh, at the uh, household level. Um, with that, throughout this campaign, which is uh, its focus, uh, of course, in North America and in three particular pilot cities, which are Montreal, uh, Merida in Mexico, and the Olympic Peninsula region in, 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 in the U.S. And the idea is, is, is to through through to raise awareness through 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 impact, and then and, and then. Uh, uh, giving them, giving people uh, solutions on, on, on how to do something about it. Uh, so we ask ourselves the question, what would happen if those 168 million tons of food loss and waste uh, were in, in, uh, in, in, in downtown Montreal? And so you can see the, 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 the food waste mountain that would cover downtown Montreal. And, and through these shocking uh, <laughs> images, you, you, you start uh, making the right questions. And, and the idea is to guide uh, people to use the, 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 the kit at home to understand the little things that you can do at home. We develop a series of uh, electronic uh, videos, educational videos uh, that are available online and, and, and uh, they're being uh, uh, also uh, distributed through social media. Um, uh, well, it's, it's a whole uh, 360 campaign using many, many uh, campaign tools. Uh, and, and, and the idea is, is to do that. Uh, so we invite you to, to, to join the movement to, to, to uh, shrink food waste and, and, and please do visit our, our site and, and, and feel free to reach out to work together on this. And, and again, thank you very much for, for, for giving me the opportunity to participate and, and, and thank you again. <laughs>
Excellent. Thank you so much, Armando. So uh, we've learned that CEC has plenty of measurement advice also for different stakeholders in North America, as well as awareness raising materials, which we encourage all of you to uh, revise. So now having heard a global perspective and some key numbers on North America, we will zoom in a bit further into Canada, the US and Mexico, and we will hear from representatives from the three environmental ministries in these countries, starting with Canada. So it's my pleasure to introduce Michael van der Poel, who is Senior Program Coordinator for the Waste Reduction and Management Division of Environment and Climate Change Canada. In his role, he provides guidance and subject matter expertise on a variety of waste-related issues, including food and organic waste, and he has represented Canada on a number of international forums and food waste. Michael, thanks for being with us, and the floor is yours. Well, then, everyone, uh, thank you, and, uh, and hello. Um, I'd, I'd like to, to start off again by thanking everyone who's really taken a um, Together, we really can make a difference, as many of my colleagues have already mentioned. By reducing food loss and waste, we can improve food security, nutrition, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, lower uh, pressure on water and land resources, and increase productivity and economic growth. Doing so also increases the efficiency in the way that our food is produced, distributed, and consumed. During my presentation, I'll briefly outline some of the approaches to addressing food waste in Canada. I'm just trying to advance my slide. It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I think you have to click twice on it. Left click with your mouse. Okay, there we go. Thank you. The Government of Canada published the Food Policy for Canada in 2019, following extensive consultation with experts and stakeholders across Canada. The policy represents a roadmap to help build a healthier and more sustainable food system in Canada. It also represents the overarching policy under which the Government of Canada is mandated to address food waste. Reducing food waste is identified as one of four key action areas in this policy, the others being community access to healthy foods, making Canadian food a top choice at home and abroad, and, su and supporting food security in Northern and Indigenous communities. The policy also includes the development of targets that align with UN Sustainable Development Goals, such as Target 12.3, which aims to have food waste by 2030. To support policy implementation, the Government of Canada has committed $26.3 million to reducing food waste, which includes a food waste reduction challenge to fund innovative food waste reduction proposals across the supply chain, and reducing food waste in federal facilities to lead by example. An additional $50 million has been allocated to support local food infrastructure and community-based non-profit organizations. This may include, for example, improving capacity for cold chain management in food rescue efforts. I think I advanced too far, let me just see. Yes, there we go. The Government of Canada has also recently undertaken other activities to foster food waste reduction. Examples include publishing a document titled Taking Stock of Food Loss and Waste Reduction in Canada, which highlights current actions taken by organizations across Canada's supply chain to reduce food waste, and proposes potential areas for improvement. Hosting a national workshop on reducing food loss and waste, which invited 100 experts from across the country to share ideas and discuss opportunities for measuring and reducing food loss and waste, and participating in food waste projects under NAFTA's Commission for Environmental Cooperation, which have culminated in foundational studies, a guide on why and how to measure food loss and waste, and an action kit to engage youth in reducing food waste. In Canada, the responsibility for managing and reducing municipal solid waste is shared among federal, provincial, 
Territorial municipal governments. In general terms, municipal governments manage the collection, recycling, composting, and disposal of household waste. While provincial and territorial authorities establish waste reduction policies and programs, approve and monitor waste management facilities and operations. With this in mind, many provinces have made commitments to address food waste. Some examples from Canada's most highly populated provinces include British Columbia's Climate Leadership Plan, which aims to divert 30% of food waste by the year 2030, Ontario's Food and Organic Waste Policy Statement, which strives to reduce food waste, provide education and work with schools, Quebec's Politique Bioalimentaire, which reduces food waste and promotes food donations. British Columbia also recently announced its, cl its Clean BC Organics Infrastructure and Collection Program that will invest up to $25.7 million to support community-led organic waste processing infrastructure and residential organic waste collection programs. Several Canadian municipalities have, have also in place or are developing food waste reduction plans as exemplified by Metro Vancouver's Regional Food System Action Plan, the City of Toronto's Long-Term Waste Strategy, and Ville de Montréal's Zero Waste Strategy. Through the Pacific Coast Collaborative, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, California, and the cities of Vancouver, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Oakland, and Los Angeles are working together to build the low cost low carbon economy of the future. As part of its work, collabor the collaboration um, adopted a regional goal to have food waste by the year 2030. In addition, Nova Scotia, Quebec, Ontario, and several municipalities in British Columbia, including Metro Vancouver, also have or plan to have in place organic waste landfill disposal bans, which also target food waste. While I've been asked to speak primarily to the types of engagement the Canadian governments have taken to address food waste, I'd be remiss not to mention that many industries, businesses, and non-government organizations across Canada are demonstrating leadership in this area already. This slide depicts just a few examples from across Canadian industry and businesses, including donations of surplus foods, research to optimize packaging and storage, the adoption of voluntary targets for reducing food waste, improved inventory management systems and technologies to measure and track food waste, and the adoption of related training and certification programs. This slide highlights some of the examples of other organizations, such as not-for-profit organizations, food rescue organizations, universities, recycling councils, and waste management associations. They include strategies to address food loss and waste, research to better understand food loss and waste across Canada's food supply chain, collaborations, partnerships, and consumer awareness campaigns, and recovery and redistribution of surplus food that would otherwise be wasted. The National Zero Waste Council, founded by the Metro Vancouver in, in collaboration with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities in 2013, has been particularly active in targeting food waste reduction. Its work includes launching the Love Food Hate Waste Canada campaign, which is modeled after the proven consumer awareness and behavioral change campaign in the United Kingdom. Love Food Hate Waste Canada currently operates in major municipalities located in British Columbia. Ontario and Quebec, and intends to increase municipal coverage across Canada over time. In closing, I'd like to reiterate that everyone has a role to play in reducing food waste from farm to fork, and that governments, businesses, and non-government organizations across Canada are working to address food loss and waste. With that, I thank you for your attention and wish you and your families well during these challenging times. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. That was a very impressive overview of activities going on in Canada. And one key uh, thing is to understand indeed activities on a federal, provincial and municipal level. 
depending what the, uh, the mandates there are in action. Now, before we move uh, south to the US, just one reminder, we will share all the slides with you and also a recording of this webinar. So uh, you will receive the slides with all the figures and numbers in your inbox probably by tomorrow. It is now my pleasure to introduce Maxwell Torney uh, from the EPA, who is an International Environmental Program Specialist at the Office of International and Tribal Affairs at the US Environmental Protection Agency in Washington, DC. Part of his work focuses on food loss and waste and resource efficiency and collaborating on these issues with partners through various fora, including the CEC, G7, and G20. So thank you for being with us, Max, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Florian. Let me try to share my screen here. Are you able to see that? Yes, looks great. Great, thank you. Uh, so thank you, Florian, for the introduction and thank you to FAO North America and the CEC for inviting EPA to be a part of this panel. Um, today, I'm excited to share some of the work the US EPA has been doing on food waste reduction. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, improving measurement of waste and food in the US has been a top priority for EPA for several years now. Today, I will mention several efforts, including one, our federal interagency partnership and initiative, Two, our engagement with other key stakeholders. Three, our measurement efforts. Four, sustainable management of food during the COVID-19 public health crisis. And five, our tools and resources available. Reducing food waste is an administrative priority of the agency. We join with the US Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration as our federal partners on this topic. Uh, together, we are able to address many issues facing the food system today and reach a broader audience. In October 2018, EPA, USDA, and FDA signed an interagency formal agreement and introduced the Winning on Reducing Food Waste Initiative. This initiative aligns efforts. I'm sorry, I got a notification. Uh, start video. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so in October 2018, EPA, USDA, FDA signed an interagency formal agreement and introduced the Winning on Reducing Food Waste Initiative. This initiative aligns efforts across the federal government to educate consumers, engage key stakeholders, and develop and evaluate solutions to food loss and waste. In April 2019, EPA, USDA, and FDA released a federal interagency strategy prioritizing six main areas for action. One, enhancing interagency coordination, Two, increasing consumer education and outreach efforts. Three, improve coordination and guidance on food loss and waste measurement. Four, clarify and communicate information on food safety, food date labels, and food donations. Five, collaborate with private industry to reduce food loss and waste across the supply chain. And six, encourage food waste reduction by federal agencies in their respective facilities. This year, we updated EPA's interagency strategy webpage to include uh, uh, contributing efforts over the past year by agency within each of the priority areas. I encourage everyone to take a closer look by visiting www.epa.gov slash sustainable dash management dash food and clicking on the link for interagency federal strategy on reducing food waste. Some highlights for EPA include offering new funding opportunities to support anaerobic digestion and also launching of an updated version of our Excess Food Opportunities Map. We intend to continue work outlined in the strategy and priority areas into the future. We, along with our federal partners, know that we can't make significant changes acting alone, but need and rely upon our external partners and key stakeholders. Some of those partners are included here on this slide. We have been able to formalize our partnerships with REFED and the Food Waste Reduction Alliance with agreements. We also point to the US Food Loss and Waste Champions. These are, this is a group of industry leaders who have made the public commitment to mirror the national goal and reduce their food waste by 50% by the year 2030. EPA also works with and recognizes businesses and organizations for outstanding achievement who participate in our food recovery challenge. This is a voluntary initiative program, or I'm sorry, voluntary incentive program in which Organizations and businesses set data-driven goals, implement targeted strategies to reduce wasted food in their operations, and report results to compete for annual recognition from EPA.
Our facts and figures about materials, waste, and recycling report shares data on the generation and disposal of municipal solid waste in the United States. We currently estimate that over 38 million tons of food is sent to landfills or combustion facilities annually. We have known that our estimates did not include many of the ways that food is managed beyond composting, combustion, and landfill, such as donation, anaerobic digestion, or animal feed. In response, we are currently improving our methodology to estimate food waste and aim to apply this enhanced methodology for our next fact and figures report. We know that implementing a successful management practice starts with measurement, and that's why, we're, that's why we supported the development of why and how to measure food loss and waste, a practical guide. This guide was developed as part of the Commission for Environmental Cooperation, CEC Operational Plan 2017 to 2018, and it's measuring and mitigating food loss uh, and waste project. It includes easy to use measurement guidelines for every segment of the, of the food value chain from primary production to manufacturing to the food service industry. We can't ignore the food supply chain disruptions that have occurred as a result of COVID-19. For example, the shift away from eating in restaurants, cafeterias, and schools has caused a much greater demand for food in grocery stores. Now more than ever, it is essential that we prevent food from being wasted and help get excess food distributed to those who need it. EPA has posted a page listing some resources and practical tips for individuals and businesses titled Recycling and Sustainable Management of Food During the Coronavirus or COVID-19 Public Health Emergency, which is available at www.epa.gov coronavirus. Our key federal partners, FDA and USDA, also have web pages addressing COVID-19. In 2017, USDA, Cornell University, and the Food Marketing Institute developed an application called the Food Keeper app, which offers users valuable storage advice about more than 400 food and beverage items. In addition, the application can remind you to use items before they are likely to spoil. Our regional representatives have acted as key players to bring entities together and find solutions to a number of issues that have resulted from the current pandemic. In addition to the resources of, I've already mentioned related to sustainable uh, management of food during the pandemic, there are a few more I wanna highlight. The Further With Food Center for Food Loss and Waste Solutions site, a national virtual resource center to find and share information about proven solutions and innovative new approaches for reducing food loss and waste. The Food Matters Action Kit, another product of the CEC, which provides several engaging activities for kids and youth ages 5 to 25 to learn about and take action on reducing food waste and the Excess Food Opportunities Map, an interactive map that identifies and displays facility-specific information about potential generators and recipients of excess food in the industrial, commercial, and institutional sec sectors, and also provides estimates of excess food by generator type. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Max. So we encourage you also to revise these uh, EPA resources and especially the uh, food access map is a quite interesting tool, which um, you should explore. We will now move to Mexico and we will have two speakers for Mexico. One is Claudia Sanchez Castro, Deputy Director of Soils at the Secretariat of Environmental and Natural Resources as well as Itzel Gonzalez Ornelas, who is head of the Department of the Promotion of Sustainable Development at Semarnat. Thank you so much and over to you. Thank you, Thank you Florian. Uh, good morning, everybody. Well, I'm going to, I don't know if you can see our presentation. Well, <coughs> thank you very much uh, for the FAO North America and CAC. For us, it's a, a big honor to be with you because uh, we are always uh, working with the CAC and FAO, but like Mr. Uh, Sharon said, not always is Mexico in the big picture, no. Now we are working together in this important event. And well, um, we are going to, take, uh, to talk about the Mexican Food Loss and Waste Initiatives. Uh, I'm Claudia Sanchez, it's in Gonzalez, and we are in, in, on, the, on this webinar uh, our bosses, Adelita San Vicente, Lydia Mead, Regina Trigeros, and we work on the Ministry of Environmental and Natural Resources. Well, first one, uh, we are going to talk about the, the work that we are making for some years. 
in 2017, uh, Semarnat called on federal agencies and organized civil society to present the report Food Losses and Waste in Mexico. This document was prepared by the World Bank in Mexico in collaboration with the National Polytechnic Institute. And they conclude the following. An estimate annual food loss and waste of 20 million tons from the analysis of 79 products from the farm gate to the household it represented over 35% of the total food produced in the country. This, this is similar to the numbers of the FAO. And the greenhouse gases emissions generated from only 25 of the 79 analyzed food product is around 36 million tons of CO2 equivalent annually. Growing 22 of the 79 analyzed food products that are then wasted or lost required near of 40 billion cubic meters of water per year. And we, we have a working group. It was coordinated by Semarnat, was established in 2017 to address the challenge of food loss and waste in Mexico with the participation of the Office of the President, federal ministries like tourism, uh, agriculture, welfare, and Samarnat, and other public, private, and civil society agencies. Uh, the consensus pointed towards the need for a concerted approach to address food loss and waste, for which uh, World Bank in Mexico and RAP, in collaboration to this working group, developed the conceptual framework for a national strategy on food loss and waste. It identifies the hotspots where losses and waste occur along the food supply chain and provides an initial list of solutions for the short, medium, and long term that could help to prevent and reduce the food loss and waste. And you can see in this part all the, the, the collaboration that we have. You know? And about the Agenda 2030, um, since 2019, the National Institute of Statistics and Geography, INEGI, coordinates a working group to design and implement the food waste survey. It's to measure in quantitative terms the food loss and waste in the agricultural sector, pre-harvest and poor harvest, service sector and households. In this group, uh, participant well, Semarnat, the Research Center for Sustainable Rural Development and Food Sovereignty, from the House of the Representative of the National Congress, the Chapingus Autonomous University, and the National Polytechnic Institute. Uh, we are going to make some case studies this year, randomly across the, the country. With the COVID, it's, it's going to be a, a challenge, but we are going to start this, this exercise. And we hope to make the formal survey the, the next year. These results will be a major input in reporting the national progress in, for the SDGs 12.3. And we are working together in an intersecretarial group of health, food, environment, and competitiveness. The goal of this group is to, to have a fair, healthy, and sustainable food system. The theme of food loss and waste prevention and reduction it's a key component of, of this group. And it's componented this group of public ministries and agencies. And we have a lot of interaction with the years. For example, with the FAO Mexico, two years ago, they made a food loss and waste measurement from three of the crops most important for our country, maize, bean, and tomato. And for example, uh, tomorrow is going to be for us the national day of the maize. No, it's, it's the idea that that's so important this this crop for us. And now we are working together with the FAO and other agencies to generate a guide to preventing and reducing the food loss of vegetables aimed to small and medium uh, producers in Mexico. And I know that Armando talked about the project of the with the CEC but we want to point out the teamwork at, in Mexico. No? For example, in the project of measuring and mitigation food loss and waste, we work uh, a lot with uh, World Bank in Mexico 
Nestlé México, de Restaurant Talks, Pro Natura and Food Banks of Mexico. ¿no? And now for, for this project, the Preventing and Reducing Food Loss and Work, for example, we are working with the Central Market of Mexico City, is one of the most biggest central markets in the world. So we want that they taste the, the guide of why and how to measure the food loss and waste. We are working with the campaign to the, of education with Food Bank of Mexico. Uh, we have the, the input of the Institute of the Radio in Mexico because in, in some places it's not so easy to access to the, to the internet, no? So we have to, to think for a, another kind of country like East Mexico. And we have the, the support of the government of Yucatan and the Merida city. And about the local initiatives, well, uh, Grab and the Food Banks of Mexico, they are working uh, in the past year and this year about to generate voluntary agreements. Grab is an expert to, to make this and they are trying to do case studies based in good practices to generate a guide of, for preventing and reducing the food loss and waste in Mexico City. And the interaction, for example, with the CAC is if they, if they are going to, to go to another restaurant or hotel or hospital, they can, they can use the input of the CEC, use the guide, no? That's, that's the interaction that, that we need to do in all the countries, uh, work together. And the Secretary of the Environment in Mexico City, they, they are implementing a zero food waste certification program for food service establishments in Mexico City. And uh, it's the part for, of my friend itself. Thank you, Claudia. Another important local initiative is the case we have in the city of Merida, in the state of Yucatan. The municipal government of this city in the southeast of Mexico has implemented since 2018 a public program that recognizes the good practices carried out by local food service companies in environmental and social management. The Certification on Environmental Responsibility Program is part of the commitment of the Milan Pact, of which Merida is a signatory. And because it is a member of the International Organization of Local Governments uh, for Sustainability. The objective of the program is to warranty local strategies that promote food security, security I'm sorry, and contribute to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. Next, please. To grant certification, the program evaluates various, various aspects of food service companies, among which are the good practices they carry out to reduce, to reduce food waste. The certificate is valid for one year, and there are four levels for certification, gold, silver, bronze, and special mention. As you can see in this slide, during the three years that the Certification on Environmental Responsibility Program has been implemented, and thanks to the hard work of the Municipality of Merida, the interest of the food service companies to um, register and become certified has increased, increased sorry, in each edition. In the first year, five restaurants were certified. 25 were certified the, follow, the following year, and by 2020, 44 uh, food service companies sing up the program. Uh, however, due to COVID-19, the municipality had to stop the certification process. However, the municipality has continued to provide training uh, through webinars to carry on raising awareness among companies about the importance of this program. I would like to conclude my participation by saying that the work that the municipality of Merida is doing to raise awareness about the serious problem of food loss is fantastic. Uh, but, it's, but it's important to mention that Merida's, uh, Merida's perseverance and work that the municipality of Merida sorry, uh, and willingness 
to cooperate in other projects that had to their initiative have, have been key in this process. And this is the reason, the reason sorry, why the SEMARNAT or Ministry of Environmental uh, are working with different initiatives because through the reinforcement of the action to make awareness, uh, we are decreasing the generation of waste. And for our ministry, for our ministry, there is no better public policy in waste management that not generate it. And if my partner agrees, uh, I think that that's all from us. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, we only want to, to conclude that for, for our ministry, it's very important to work together. Like, like Armando said, it's free, some, some of the products. We have the best uh, working with us, RAP, WRA. So we need to, to make the difference in, in each part of, of the chain. No? We have the, the between countries, between ministries, with the private sector, with the society. So, so for us, it's very important, uh, the, a, real, a really work team. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much, Claudia and Itza, for this great overview of activities going on in Mexico on the federal level, but also local initiatives. Uh, and also about how you setting incentives can work to reduce food loss and waste. And as Michael said at the beginning, uh, indeed, it's great to see um, the collaboration working together as everyone has a role to play. So this concludes our perspectives from, um, from the environmental ministries. We will we'll now um, come to a multi-stakeholder panel. And like the Monarch butterfly on the CEC logo, we will fly back from Mexico to Canada, actually. And we will start with a private sector perspective from Mexico, um, which uh, we will hear from Gustavo Perez. And he is the senior vice president for sustainability and social responsibility at the Gigante Restaurant Group. He has been successfully implementing high impact sustainability projects in one of the leading restaurant chains in Mexico. So thank you so much for being with us, Gustavo, and looking forward to hear from you. Okay, thank you again uh, very much for the invitation uh, for the GC, CSC, and the PAO. Gracias, Armando, por la invitación. And uh, on this quick, quick presentation, I will share uh, about our food and uh, loss and waste reduction efforts. Um, you, you are not familiar uh, on this company outside Mexico, but we represent one of the largest restaurant chain group groups in the country. We have more than 240 restaurants with more than 30 million consumers. We have five brands and almost uh, 10,000 employees. And um, we have the, the family dining place that is Tox. Then we have Panda Express as a fast food. Then we have seven beer factories and the restaurant on the side. And then we have the, the taco, uh, taco shopping place. And then we have Shake Shack for Mexico. Now we are becoming a, a multi-unit brand. And I'm talking about the efforts. Uh, and on, on this, on, on, on this uh, pyramid, we start on source reduction. And we start uh, after we, we map and we diagnose when we are, we are, we are having the problem on, on food and loss uh, and on waste. We started moving to offer our customers different sizes recipes in salads, soups, make, uh, Mexican uh, recipes and beverage. And then we serve bread only and marmalade only by demand. We didn't put the bread at the beginning. We just ask the, our consumer how much are they going to uh, want to have. And after that, we serve only the amount that uh, the customer is willing to, to, to eat. On this effort, only with, with these small efforts, we reduce 18% our food and loss waste issues. Then we have in Panda Express and Shake Shack, we implement the food bank program. Uh, as far as I know, here we have Almendra Ortiz from the Food Bank Mexico. Hola Almendra, 
and uh, they have been great partners for us. We have uh, made more, more than uh, seven tons of food on donation in 2019. Of course, we reduced this year because of the, of the closing restaurants. But we understood how to work with food bank uh, organizations. And on our beer, beer factory uh, restaurants, we uh, give uh, barley uh, waste for feeding animals, especially cows. So as you can see on this very brief presentation, we start in the, at different stages with the different, with the different um, companies that we have, the different brands. And um, we start first understanding the issue and then to take actions and put actions for real. For, for example, I, I, I was, I wanna share you a, a story. I was talking with one businessman in the United States and I was talking about this uh, reduction on the, on, on the size of the recipes and these options for our customers. And he said to me, well, for me, in my company, this is impossible because our value proposition is to offer Texas size portions. And that means a lot of food. So to be honest, Florian and all the people that, uh, who are listening to me, for me, this was shocking. So I understood that the first challenge is to change our mindset. Governments, the private sector, and the civil society. If you don't change, if we don't change, me as Gustavo myself and, uh, and the rest of the, of, of, of the participants, if we don't change our mindset, we are never going to make that happen. And one example of, the, of a different mindset is our Shake Shack CEO for Mexico. He told me uh, just uh, uh, one month after the first opening of uh, Shake Shack uh, unit here in Mexico City, he told me, I hate waste, especially wasting food. So make it happen that we are not going to have food waste in Shake Shack in Mexico. So we, 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 we make a partner with a food bank program, the best one in the country. And after we prove success, we move to the Panda Express brand. We approach to the, to, the, to the Panda Express headquarters in Los Angeles, and we ask them permission to implement a food bank program. And now we have a food bank program in all the, 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 the restaurants in here, here in Mexico. And also the, the, the feeding animals uh, with, with all the waste of, of barley, we have uh, reduced 95% the waste of, of, of this kind of, of, of ingredient for, for feeding animals. So for me, the steps is first a real uh, tool from the top, the CEO commitment. Then you have to understand your own business because as you, as you can see, we didn't implement the same thing in, in, in the different brands. We implemented in, 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 in different stages. So first we understood our, our, our business and how can we be more successful in our um, waste reduction efforts. Then we diagnose, evaluate options, then decide and execute and walk the talk. And we are now evaluating and adjusting and, and, and improving. And, and just to finish, I want to let you know that we have reduced more than 30% of all our uh, food and, and, and loss of waste. Uh, still, there's a long way to go. We are not at the end. We are, we are just at, uh, at the first quarter of the, of the effort. Our main goal for the next of this year, 2020, is we are going to implement a zero waste program in two restaurants, two tox restaurants in Mexico City. And if we can make it happen in two of our main uh, restaurants here in Mexico City, then we implement in the rest of the chain 
in the in 2021 and 2022. And um, we have to stop food and loss waste. It is for us and it's for the planet and it's for the next generation. Thank you very much. And uh, this is my, my email in case you want to get in touch with me uh, in, in short. So, thank you very much and all the best. Thank you so much, Gustavo. I think that was a very interesting overview of private sector initiatives in Mexico. And I think your key message really resonated, which is small efforts can make a big difference. And there can be portion sizes, the size of your plate, um, but also the mindset is important. What is your value proposition and what do you think consumers expect from you? But uh, probably also consumer will value all these efforts in reducing food loss and waste. So thank you very much for this overview. We will now move to the US North to um, the World Resource Institute to hear more an academic perspective. And looking forward to hear from Brian Lipinski, who is associated at the World Resource Institute. During his plus 10 years with the World Resource Institute, he has worked extensively on the topic of food loss and waste, having served also as lead author for the paper Reducing Food Loss and Waste and the recent CEC guide on how and why to measure food loss and waste. Thank you for being with us, Brian, and over to you. Thank you, Florian, and thank you everyone for joining us today. And I'm, I'm honored to have the, the opportunity to speak with you. So um, what I'm going to focus on is just walking through some of the current efforts and initiatives that are taking place right now to reduce food loss and waste all the way from the farm to the fork. So one of those items that we've already heard about a few times is the CEC Practical Guide to Food Loss and Waste Measurement, Why and How to Measure Food Loss and Waste. Um, this was a document that was published in 2019 and contains a number of steps and tips on how to go about measuring and reducing food loss and waste. And it walks through seven key modules, starting with the why should you do it to begin with, establishing a business case, all the way to identifying some of the key impacts and some sector specific guidance depending on where you are in the food supply chain. And so actually what we've been working on this year is what I've been calling a version 2.0. I don't know if that'll be the official title, but that's how I've been referring to it. And it's um, going to be an updated guide with making it even more user friendly, have a number of new tools and resources, things like interactive calculators and info sheets that will help you to understand what's happening within your own operations. And then new case studies from users in Canada, Mexico, and the US, because this is a North America focused guide. However, we do believe that many of the lessons are relevant throughout the world. And I know we have a number of folks joining from around the world today. So please still check it out, even if you're not in one of those three countries, because I think you'll find really interesting information. And one of those case studies that we already have on the site is actually from Talks, from Gustavo's company and uh, their, their efforts and what they've been able to achieve in such a short period of time, I find really inspirational in this, this fight. And I think that the case study really makes that very clear. And so the idea with this practical guide is that we're trying to make food loss and waste measurements easy, clear, and beneficial for the user. And it's something that we're trying to, I think it's already quite accessible and we're trying to make it even more so. So one of the, the calls to action I have for you today is if you're interested in reviewing or contributing a case study and, and if you're based in Canada, Mexico, or US, um, please reach out to me at brian.lipinski at wri.org and we can see if uh, we can find a way to incorporate your feedback or input because we really wanna make this a big group effort and assist as many people as possible in their journey on measuring and reducing food loss and waste. Um, another exciting initiative that was just launched last week is known as the 10 by 20 by 30 initiative. And this is a large private sector initiative that is aiming to scale up efforts to reduce food loss and waste throughout the supply chain. And so what this initiative is, is that at least 10, it was initially 10, and I know those of you who are counting will see 12 logos on the side there. So it started with 10 of the world's largest food retailers and providers following the Target Measure Act approach in which you set a target to reduce food waste, you begin measuring food waste, and then you take action to reduce it. 
and they have each reached out to 20 of their priority suppliers up the food supply chain to do the same. And so the goal, he, the idea here is that instead of just having 10 folks doing this, 10 companies doing this, you end up with over 200 and moving that impact all the way up the food supply chain. Um, these are companies located all around the world. This is truly a global effort. And I have just a quick, I'll show you, this is not so that you'll be able to read every single one, but these are all the companies that are involved. That's just half of them. <laughs> the rest of them are on this next slide. So again, another, what I find to be inspirational example of how companies are starting to take action on this and starting to really see the benefits of addressing food loss and waste within their operations, because it's not just something that you do to be a good Samaritan or a good citizen. It actually makes a lot of business sense too. You can save a lot of money by reducing food loss and waste. Um, so that's one of the, the most recent major uh, private sector initiatives that I'm really excited about and I think sets a good example for, for future action. And then finally, what you can do at home. Um, I've got a few examples here. One of them I know Armando already touched on quite a bit is the CEC Food Matters Action Kit. And I will say this because I was not involved in the development of it at all. I think this is a wonderful, um, <laughs> wonderful toolkit, wonderful guide. It's, it's, I think it's very approachable. It really brings home the issue very well. There are some really fun activities like how you can do an at-home waste audit um, and how you can make, prepare foods in ways that reduce waste and lots of other really interesting and with interesting activities that I think also make it a fun activity and, and don't make this something scary and awful, but something fun and something to work for together. Um, an additional resource that is in a similar vein is um, savethefood.com. This is developed by the Natural Resources Defense Council. It's focused on the US, but again, the, the lessons are applicable around the world. So you can see that there are a number of sections on planning, recipes, and storage. And again, this is something that helps you at the home level to look at food waste as happening in your own life and take action on that and save you money, really. That's, you become a better citizen, you become less wasteful and you're not flushing your, your grocery dollars down the drain. And then finally, um, one of the items I wanted to highlight, even though uh, it says, what can you do at work? You've probably noticed from our backgrounds, not many of us are in offices right now. <laughs> a lot of us are still having to work at home, but you know, hopefully that, won't be the case for too much longer. And one of the ideas that I would like to put forth is this notion of the office food waste challenge, where we at the World Resources Institute, um, we're a global think tank, I'm based in Washington, DC. We set out to reduce food waste within our own office. And the way that we went about that is we again followed that target measure act approach where we said, okay, we're gonna cut food waste in half. We went about measuring it. And then we started taking action to reduce that food waste. And so we actually have guidance for how you can do each of these things. Um, we, in our office, we have, when people were in the office, we would have quarterly um, food waste audit parties where we would all start digging through the trash and sorting it all out. And then afterward, we would have pizza and beer and, and look through our findings. And so it's something that uh, I think once we're all back into our workplaces, something to keep in mind is that um, we can talk about addressing food waste at the big institutional level, at the company level, but doing it at our work level and our home levels is also very important as well. I think it was Michael earlier who said that we, everybody has a role to play throughout the entire food supply chain, and I think that's absolutely true. So I will leave it there. I know we're, we're um, trying to leave some time for Q&A, but please feel free to reach out to me at brian.lipinski at wri.org. And uh, yeah, looking forward to your questions. Thank you so much, Brian, for this overview and also for this call to action that uh, there are activities that all of us can do uh, at home or even when we're back in the office in measuring our own food waste, understanding it. And there's uh, plenty of guidance by WRI and also the CEC how to measure that. So feel free to uh, try that at home and uh, see if you can reduce your own food waste. Um, now, please, before we go, um, to the next speaker, please uh, be reminded to put your questions in the Q&A box and to which speaker they address to. 
and we will come uh, to the Q&A section in a moment. Uh, now we are back in Canada and we are excited to hear from Justice Waltz, who is creative director of Brews, a company upcycling imperfect produce into healthy snacks and beverages. Justice is an interdisciplinary artist based out of Toronto uh, with an BFA in new media. She is passionate about working towards more sustainable intersectional future. Thank you for being with us, Justice, and looking forward to hear more about Bruce and how you think uh, we can engage more youth into uh, food loss and waste reduction efforts. Thank you so much. All right. Sorry, could you just enter the presentation, please? Thank you. All right, good morning. Uh, as I said, my name is Justice and I'm the creative director of Bruce. Um, I'm super grateful to be speaking here on behalf of the team. We're all really, really excited to be able to join in on these conversations about food loss and waste reduction. So thank you for being here today. Each year, around 168 million tons of food is wasted in North America alone. As Armando mentioned earlier, this amount of food equates annually to 193 million tons of CO2 emissions, nearly $300 billion US uh, lost, and could have fed 160 million people. The truth is, uh, the mountains of fresh food left to rot in landfills are just the tip of the iceberg. Our mission at Bruised is to challenge our current food systems and the stigma which surrounds spent and imperfect produce through education and yummy eats. We find a renewed purpose in the food we rescue, where others see waste, we like to see potential. So Bruised is a Toronto-based women, uh, Toronto women-run startup on a mission to revolutionize our food systems. We create wholesome plant-based products from upcycled ingredients and imperfect produce that are unnecessarily discarded as they make their way across the supply chain. So we want to um, have people feel good about what they fuel with while helping divert perfectly good food from going to the trash. Since our launch uh, last June, we've saved over 2,500 pounds of food from going to waste and we're just getting started. So far, the response uh, we've been receiving has been overwhelmingly positive, with many first-time triers becoming repeat buyers. Uh, through the many conversations we've had, we've been able to spark some curiosity about our current food systems and just how much food is grown that never reaches its intended destination, someone's plate. Other people, um, they often have this idea in their head about what food waste is, uh, that it's tossed because it's gone bad or because it was never good enough to begin with. Uh, but with Bruised, we want to challenge this damaging notion of perfection or all or nothing thinking uh, and show people that with a little creativity and care, all that perfectly good food can actually be transformed into something both delicious and nutritious. So food waste can be very out of sight, out of mind uh, as a topic, but once you get people thinking about how all this food is grows, uh, how all this produce, uh, how all this produce grows from the ground, um, that it starts from the seed and that someone has to put labor into growing and transporting it, the product becomes more than just food in their minds. It's also water, energy, and resources. All food produced has its own history, and our goal is to tell and advocate for that story. So our team sources and rescues imperfect produce across the supply chain from local farms, retailers, and wholesalers. We then craft nutrient-dense products with intention, serving both our customers and the planet. So all of our products are 100% plant-based, made without any fillers or additives. It's all just good, wholesome food. Um, our goods are handmade in small batches with love and care right here in Toronto to bring a little joy into your day with each artisanal bite. As there's no shortage of food waste and loss though globally, uh, our model is easily scalable and can work in most cities around the world. However, we see Brews as more than just a business selling a product. We're here to create change within our community, promote low waste living, and inspire healthy discussions about how we as individuals can mitigate food waste in our daily lives. Uh, so we had the opportunity, oops, we had the opportunity to represent Canada as the winners of the Youth Innovation Challenge earlier this year. 
uh, it was such an inspiring experience to connect with other millennials trying to solve environmental issues by bringing new ways of thinking to life. Uh, this exposure was amazing. It allowed us to share our mission of brews with important figures of North America and network with like-minded individuals hungry for change. Afterwards, we were able to leverage the financial support prov provided, um, investing in more digital content that we will use to grow our audience and bring more awareness uh, around this issue. So we believe that the youth are the future and can ultimately be the catalysts of change. Um, we want to create conversation around food waste that can help educate our youth today to have a better understanding of our current food crisis. We can then come together as a collective to work on uh, sustainable solutions that uh, are rooted in our own lives, creating a new trajectory for our future. Currently, there's a major disconnect with how we see our food. Most people are so far removed from the process of growing, harvesting, and transporting what's on our dinner plates that they lose sight of the true cost behind their meal. Our aim is to rekindle that kind of connection and get people curious about the systems they support. By bringing forward fresh, uh, informative social media content, we hope to inspire younger demographics to experiment with new ways of reducing waste at home, ideally encouraging them to foster new habits with a broadened perspective of food waste. So what's next for us is uh, creating more engaging content such as recipe videos, workshops, interviews with local farmers, and documentation of how we as individuals are also evolving in our, our knowledge of this topic to share uh, an intimate experience uh, for our friends and family who are following along, uh, following us on this journey. So at the moment, our team is currently um, taking time to grow our understanding of the where and why food waste occurs. Uh, sorry, this is just the uh, <laughs> the socials that we currently share. Uh, examples of some of the content uh, that we're targeting younger audiences with, uh, mostly on Instagram. And um, yeah, so at the moment our team is taking the time to constantly grow our understanding of the where and why food waste occurs, building relationships with farmers, learning more about um, sustainable agriculture practices, and we're volunteering at local urban farms in order to do this. Um, Monique Chan, the founder of the company, is also working at farmers markets and has been for quite some time. Um, the whole reason she started Bruised in the beginning was she saw firsthand from working in restaurants and farmers markets how much fresh food was going to waste. Um, so this has been really great for us to kind of just get a better perspective, being able to talk to farmers and see like what makes spent arugula um, <laughs> like not able to sell or why they wouldn't harvest uh, perfectly good food um, for whichever reason. Um, by fostering community around making small changes in our daily lives, uh, supporting each other through this journey to create um, a better world and welcoming imperfection, uh, both in ourselves and in the world, in the food we eat, we are hoping to spark a revolution towards a sustainable way of life. Uh, we strive to set a new norm as a plant-based company in how we operate, and we're always working towards our ethos of providing feel-good food for both the planet and people. If you're interested in following us on this journey, please give us a follow on Instagram and Facebook at Bruce Co. Feel free to check out our website for more exciting content to come. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Justice, for this uh, interesting introduction to um, that you engage millennials hungry for change also on social media and indeed as you said fighting food waste can be delicious and very nutritious indeed so this concludes our second panel and now we will move into questions and answers and since we just heard from uh, you justice maybe we can start with you so there are two questions for you um, the one is uh, how about packaging um, uh, is there, are there any ways uh, that you think about sustainable packaging and also um, farmers, if you're able to pay farmers for their surplus food? Yeah, definitely. Um, so to answer the first question, currently um, all of our packaging is completely recyclable. So we use uh, glass jars to sell our granola, our imparfaits, um, and we're 
constantly looking for new ways to um, to be able to expand our product line while also keeping completely recyclable packaging. Um, there tends to be a lot of greenwashing, unfortunately, in the packaging industry. So there are a lot of um, places that have compostable um, kind of plastic, compostable plastic, uh, which doesn't really make sense. And in fact, um, can't be composted in most local, um, uh, local centers. Um, so what we're doing is we're just trying to make sure that um, on our end, at least that we are sticking to our ethos and like re really uh, trying to uh, look at the holistic approach of sustainability um, and not just, you know, what looks good potentially to, to consumers or like what would be cheapest. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then the second question, sorry, could you jog my memory? Sure, it's saying, Justice, is Bruce able to pay farmers for their surplus and how much is appropriate? Yeah, so we are able to pay farmers for our surplus. Uh, we have close relations, as we I mentioned earlier, we have close relationships with these farmers and we like to talk to them and get to know them uh, first and what, um, what usually happens is our founder, Monique Chan, uh, will have those discussions with, you know, what makes sense for, for the farm, what makes sense for us, how we can help um, mitigate any other costs like transportation um, and such. So it's kind of a, an ongoing and evolving process, but it is um, something that we, we definitely it's very important our relationships with our farmers so we want to want to keep in in good relations with them excellent thank you so much uh, now i have two questions uh, for maximo uh, one is uh, food loss research including measurement has continued past 2017 and suggests that baselines should be higher in fruit and vegetable crops um, if uh, should this most recent information be incorporated so one about the baseline of fruit and vegetable uh, food loss and waste. And the second question would be if the current pandemic and the way uh, people buy food through food deliveries has, uh, how does that has impacted uh, food loss and waste? Okay, so on the first question, the, the index that we have developed is a food loss index, it's not a waste index, that's UNEP uh, responsibility and still uh, the index is not ready on their side. Uh, on our side, we have uh, in our baseline indicators for fruits and vegetables for fish, meat and for cereals. So we have that disaggregation, which you can look into the webpage and you will see the indicators by commodity, by country uh, and by type of, of commodity. So that is there. And yes, uh, especially in developing countries, high value commodities uh, like fruits and vegetables have higher levels of losses than staple commodities. Uh, and that's something where there is significant improvement that can happen. And that's what we are trying to pursue by identifying where in the value chain they occur. Uh, regarding the, the the second question, sorry, I forgot what was the second question. The second question was, is uh, how the new ways of acquiring food through food delivery or oh, takeaways COVID-19, yeah. Food was waste. So, so there are two, two effects on COVID-19. Uh, the first effect was because of the logistical issues and that is already resolved. There was a lot of increase uh, in, in post-harvest uh, losses because of the lack of labor, no migrant labor. And that's something that uh, we are documenting right now, uh, but that, that was already resolved. The major problem that we're going to face on, on, on because of COVID-19 uh, is not necessarily on the wayside. On the wayside, what happened initially that there was over purchasing, no? and that created some problems because of panic buying. That is settled, that's not longer there, and, and that has been resolved, but yes, it's increased potentially, could have increased potentially the waste. But the major problem is the recession. And why is a major problem is because most of developing countries are exporters of high value commodities like fruits and, and, and mangoes and meat. And those developing countries will be facing a significant reduction in the demand from the developed countries. Which means that a mango producer, for example, will have to live in the field. There is the mango that is compliant with the specificities that were required by, by importing countries like caliper, size, color, and so on and so forth, and being organic that mango doesn't have a local market. Uh, basically, the price of that mango in the local market will be too low, so the producer will prefer to leave it in the trees. 
and that is what we call left in the field. So our uh, expectations is that there will be a significant level of losses in left in the field pre-harvest uh, because of the COVID-19 in addition to the traditional level of losses that we already have in place. Excellent, thank you so much. And indeed, as Maximo was mentioning, it's key to understand that this global figure of one third of food loss and waste globally was an initial estimate in 2011. And that uh, now FAO is custodian of the food loss index, uh, where the first global estimate came out last year, which is 14% of um, uh, food uh, is globally lost. Um, and the other index is the food uh, waste index, which is under the custodianship of the UN Environment Program, where we're still waiting for initial estimates. And these indexes are a lot more specific. They allow us each country to identify, I think, 10 key commodities uh, and a really country specific understanding also of loss points. So uh, that's, that's a useful clarification. Uh, let's move on to a question for Armando. Um, you mentioned that 168 million tons is wasted in North America each year. Uh, what strategies can be put in place to address food needs of hungry people? Thank you. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, the, the, the one thing that we, we really need to, to, to think about is that the world doesn't stop for us to think. You know? And, and we have to find the time to, to, to think. So if we want to know what, what are the, the, the actions that we can take, what are the best uh, possible actions we can take for different things, either preventing food waste or, 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 or getting uh, uh, food to the plates of, of, of people that don't have food. We have to, to try to understand how, how we're currently operating to, to, give, to, to find ourselves the time to, 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 to be able to, to review our ways and, and, and identify those minor tweaks because most of them are really minor tweaks that we can, we can do uh, in, in our operation, in our process, in, in, in the way we, we, we eat, in the way we buy, in the way uh, we, we produce food, et cetera, and, 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 and start doing them. And, and we'll find out that it's not only something that we have to do, but it's something that actually makes sense from, from, from many uh, points of view. It, it makes sense to do it. It's even economically uh, logic to do it. And uh, we just need to, to give ourselves uh, the, the time to, to think about it and identify these, these little changes. And that's what the, the, the tools we are, we are uh, uh, developing uh, try to help with, to, to, to just raise this awareness, but also uh, help in finding what can we do at our specific level to, to, to solve these things. Excellent, thank you. And then we have two questions to Gustavo. Um, so could you describe the reaction of customers to smaller or different meal portion sizes? Um, and then also um, uh, that many all-inclusive hotels donate their leftovers, but this might be a possible health risk. That's why they don't, um, don't donate food. Uh, if uh, you could address these concerns over getting sued, uh, sued for food safety issues or uh, recycling efforts in hotels. But um, so first question, uh, what was the reaction of consumers to the changes that you implemented? And second, what can all-inclusive hotels do? Well, on the, on the first question, most of the, our consumers uh, reacted in a very positive way because we explained the reason for the, all this change of portions. But also we had this um, uh, size by demand for example, if, if the customer wants a, a big size because he, big, big, big portion because he's going to eat it, of course we are able to sell it to, to him. So we also, we, we have the option. The, the important thing that is not the first option. The first option is to have a decent amount of, 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 of meal, but if you want a big size, then of course you can have it, but it's most by demand. On the, on, the, on, on the hotel industry with this all-inclusive or this uh, buffet, uh, all you can eat for an amount of, of US dollars, it's a huge issue. For, for example, we, uh, three or four years ago, we buy a major restaurant chain here in Mexico called uh, California Restaurants, and they were only buffet. 
And because of this huge amount of waste, we stop it and we change it to tox to the tox brand. We 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 we, we couldn't believe how much uh, food uh, do you waste if you have a buffet and you don't have a very efficient uh, approach to reduce. So uh, on a personal view, I don't like buffets. And I every time I talk to, to, the, to the business people related to the tourist industry, if uh, I urge them or I try to inspire them to make a food bank program or something similar. So um, for, for, for me, this is a big scene to waste food. So I, 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 I try to talk with all the colleagues in the, in the restaurant industry not only in Mexico, but, but in all the countries we, we, we have partners and, 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 and alliances to make this happen. But, but you have to change your mindset. Uh, the, the businessman has to change your mindset that uh, wasting food is very bad, not only for, for, for the money for them, but for the planet and for the people. Excellent. Thank you, Gustavo. Um, our last question goes to uh, Semanat, uh, Claudio Itzel, and the question is if there are any types of sanctions at any stage of the food supply chain in Mexico for those who continue to waste. And um, so is there, is it rather a carrot or a stick uh, approach in Mexico when it comes to food loss and waste? Well, <clears throat> for the moment, we don't have any sanctions. Uh, I think that it's the, the other side. We, we need to give benefits. If, if you have a donation, if, uh, we need to improve better laws on health to, to don't receive any sanctions. So for the moment we don't have, we, we have the, the, the other side. Excellent. We are unfortunately out of time for the question and answers, but thank you for your insightful questions. And as mentioned, we will share the PowerPoints. Uh, that often also include the contact details of our speakers today. So feel free to follow up uh, with them directly. Now, before we come to closing remarks, I would like to uh, ask our speakers for their key takeaway from today's discussion in 30 seconds or less. So uh, what is really your key takeaway if people only remember one thing? So please be really brief, just 30 seconds or less. Think about the tweet length. And let's start with Wim Lendra. My uh, pitch would be very simple, move to action. And in initiating action, understand the science and the evidence behind it, contextualize. You can't have a cookie, uh, cookie cutter approach. Countries differ, situations differ, uh, types of food differ. So we have to have a very scientific way in approaching this. That said, it is high time that the world woke up to the benefits which can accrue at such small cost if we take to food loss and waste reduction seriously. Excellent. Thank you, Melinda. Over to you, Richard. Uh, much like uh, climate change, I think uh, our best uh, messengers on this issue are younger audiences, young people. We were quite successful last summer. We attended uh, the International Boy and Girl Scout Jamboree uh, where we had uh, a number of important in interactions with the young leaders and uh, and they took our message and uh, let's not forget how they can be probably the best messengers so that's my takeaway then. thank you maximo you have the floor uh, there are three wins by reducing food loss and waste uh, and that we need to move fast and act as milendra said i, I think that what is happening today in terms of food loss and waste is unacceptable uh, is unethical and we need to change it there is no way back and we need to have a good baseline over which to track performance and see how we can progress in the future. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Armando. Thank you, Florent. I will just say that uh, this is a, a true issue. It's real and we all have a role to play and it makes sense to play it. And we're all here to play to, to play it together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. From my perspective, it's about working together, um, recognizing that everyone, everywhere, has a role to play. We're talking about government, we're talking about non-government organizations, we're talking about industry, businesses, 
uh, we're talking about just consumers in general, and sort of understanding um, how we how we utilize data. It's about changing our behaviors and recognizing the impacts that these behaviors can have on the environment, on society, on the economy. Uh, it's about moving towards a circular economy and being more efficient with the way that we we, we manage um, the food within our households, our businesses, uh, within our production environments, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's about education, it's about awareness, and more importantly, it's about changing behaviors. Thank you. Then let's go to Max. Thank you, Florian. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that uh, anyone can choose to take small steps in their everyday lives uh, to help us achieve the goal of reducing food loss and waste by 50% by 2030. Um, businesses and organizations may be interested in joining the Food uh, Recovery Challenge or the U.S. Food Loss and Waste 2030 Champions, as I've mentioned. And uh, we also encourage youth to access the CEC uh, Food Action Toolkit, uh, which is available online in, in English, French, and Spanish. So it's a, it's a great tool to use. Thank you. Then let's come to Mexico, Claudia and Itze. Well, we always talk uh, it's a win-win, no? We need to all the people uh, be participating in this and that they always say, no? Small changes can make a big difference. So we need to work together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Then Gustavo, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think this is a matter that concerns all humanity. We have to prove ourselves that we can do better. No, the planet needs us and the vulnerable people needs us. And uh, let's have a better version of ourselves. And um, more important, let's, let's walk the talk. Thank you very much, Florian. Thank you, Brian. Yes, my key takeaway is that there's not going to be any one person or one action that's going to solve this issue. It's going to be something where we need lots of smaller action adding up to something big. And it's on those of us who are from policymaking or businesses or other organizations that are involved in this issue to make it as easy as possible for others and not feel like an extra burden, but something where they see the benefit for themselves. Excellent, thank you. And Justice. Yeah. Um, so from Bruised, I think we just want to encourage everyone to embrace imperfect in your everyday lives. And that goes beyond uh, imperfect produce, but also our own imperfections, right? We need everyone making small changes, not a few people doing things perfectly. So be imperfectly zero waste, be imperfectly vegan, you know, working towards um, a greater goal is great. And so like, so as long as you are um, making room for change, uh, that's the most important, important part. And by doing it ourselves, we would be inspiring other people as well. Yeah, thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. Now, before we let you go, we have one uh, important item of the program, which is closing remarks by Lina Pohl, and she's representative of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization in Mexico, since August 2019. She has also served as the Vice Minister for Environment and Natural Resources of the Republic of El Salvador from 29 to 14 and Minister of Environment and Natural Resources from 2014 to 19. So thank you so much for being with us, Lina Paul, and the floor is yours. Oh, thanks to you and what a fantastic and inspiring webinar it has been. Thank you so much to CEC and FAO to organize it, to organize this dialogue. And food loss and waste has received increased attention over the last decade in public policy, measuring methodologies, regulatory frameworks, and in general, in the public agenda. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to shifts about where and what we eat as well as shifts in food production and consumer demand, which has exacerbated the issue of food loss and waste and has made it clear that we need to position even higher on the global agenda. There is no room for food loss and waste in this time of crisis. And we must take this opportunity to build back better 
and reduce excessive levels of food loss and waste in our food system as a whole. Reducing food loss and waste is a powerful means to strengthen the long-term sustainability of our food system and, and environmental, also social and economic dimensions. We learned from the governmental panel that significant policies and initiatives are currently underway to address food loss and waste in Canada, United States, and Mexico. We have learned that important actions are being taken on the municipal, subnational, and national level, and that multi-stakeholder multi -stakeholder action is key. We agree that everybody has a role to play. Reducing food loss and waste requires the attention and action of all. From a small and large food producer to, supply, to food supplies, change stakeholder to food industry, retailers, and consumer. Everybody here have a role. While significant data gaps remain to decide the best evidence-based policy, it is clear that there are synergy and trade-offs in food loss and waste reduction effort. The strong and positive food security impacts are likely to be had by reducing food loss early in the supply chain, in particular on farm loss, in country with high levels of food insecurity. For environmental sustainability, it is better to intervene at critical loss point that occurs downstream of where most of the environmental damage take place on a given supply chain or in key points where we can prevent environmental damage to happen. There is a robust business case for company, countries, cities, and people to reduce food loss and waste, to keep on creating the best possible evidence. Data collection is key. We must keep on developing and strengthening data collection globally. But actions are required now, globally and locally, to maximize the use of the food we produce under a circular economy model. The introduction of technology, innovative solutions like e-commerce platforms, new ways of collaborative working and good practice to manage food quality and reduce food loss and waste are key to implementing transformative change. Governments and decision makers must target investments and create incentives like in Mexico to bolster efforts to reduce food loss and waste and ensure food security of the poor and vulnerable. They can also play a key role on educating consumers, as we can see now. And on the meaning of use by and best before date marks to ensure that they are used appropriately toward reducing household food waste. Private actor of the food supply chain must scale up actions to reduce food loss and waste in the supply chain through innovation and sharing practice on food loss. The food wholesale and retail sector must step up if its efforts to donate surplus food to charities and food banks, otherwise generating renewable energy and compost when necessary. Consumer must stock and store their food properly in the household and pay attention to daily factors which lead to food waste. Shrinking our personal food waste mountain is easy and can have a big impact. Follow uh, Shrink Food Waste and FLW Day on social media to learn more about how you can help. Sectors within the food supply chain can get support from the CEC and FAO and why and how to measure and reduce food loss and waste.
youth is a key driver for behavioral change. Engage with youth with simple action with the CEC Food Matter Action Kit. This is a special moment for FAO. We are not only celebrating the first ever day of awareness of food loss and weight during times of a pandemic, but also FAO's 75th anniversary as we observe World Food Day on October 16th. We invite you to join us in recognizing food heroes, farmers and workers who are making sure that food makes its way from farm to fork, even amid disruption as unprecedented as the current COVID-19 crisis. The preserving access to safe and nutritious food is and will continue to be an essential part of the response of the COVID-19 pandemic and reducing food loss and waste plays a key role. Please be part of this. Act now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lina, for this excellent summary of our discussion today for this calls for action. And um, with that, there are some final announcements I quickly wanted to make. The first is tomorrow, FAO, North America, and CEC will host a Twitter chat on food loss and waste, which is, as you can look for the hashtag FLWChat. So please join us tomorrow between 10 and 12, uh, sorry, 10 and 11 a.m. Uh, EDT for a Twitter chat and share your insights and solutions. Uh, also tomorrow is a webinar, um, a global webinar at, that FAO headquarters is hosting on the occasion of the first ever day of awareness on food loss and waste, for which we can you can register uh, with many high level speakers. And last but not least, we wanted to, of course, also already think, invite you to think about World Food Day, which is coming up on 16th October. Plan your events, maybe in a digital space, and uh, to observe also World Food Day, which is another key occasion to highlight um, food loss and waste reduction initiatives. So with that, let me thank all of you, um, our participants, for uh, joining us today, for your insightful questions. Thank you to the CEC and your whole team for partnering with us and making this webinar a success. Thank you to the interpreters, which I, I saw in the chat box are doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much for that. And thank you to all my colleagues at FAO who have contributed to today's event. Thank you again for joining us and stay safe and stay tuned.